Families, as we know, come in all shapes and sizes. Blended, single parent, gay parent and the traditional. But tonight's family is certainly unique and definitely not for everyone. You see, the Sharp household is large. There are 18 kids for a start. They have seven mums and one dad. British rabbi Phil Sharp is polygamous and proud of it. The rampant rabbi even claims that by reviving the long outlawed practice of taking several wives, he's merely doing God's work. When we moved in with the Sharps, I didn't find a divine presence, but I did discover a very long line for the loo. Ellie, is it all tidy downstairs, though? I've tried up what all of the stuff was wrong. It's a typical Saturday morning scene in households all over the world. And you're, if, you're if Craney close, comes back, right, and, and, you're and close you've not tied it up, you're going to be in trouble. Getting the kids to clean up their room. So can you go and do it, guys? Except in this family... Ellie, Abby, Ezra, Mikhail, Nathaniel. There are 18 children... Shana, Ruby, <laughs> Isaac... ..and seven wives. <laughs> <laughs> Meet the Sharks. <laughs> and King of the Castle, <laughs> Phil Sharp. The rampant rabbi, the bed hopping egomaniac. <laughs> Why does it make you laugh? <laughs> because if I was in their shoes, I'd be saying the same thing. That's why it makes me laugh. You know, who's this? guy saying he's a this and a that and the other when all he's doing is having a shag with everyone he wants to. You know, I mean, I understand that. <laughs> Britain's only openly polygamous family is certainly unconventional. Some people think my dad's an absolute loon and some people do think dad's stupid. <laughs> but not to King of the Kids, 11-year-old Ellie, who can't wait to introduce me to her mum's. Peter, this is one of my mums, Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hi. How do you do? Yeah, all right. Thank and she's you. Austrian. Austrian. So, Peter, this is my new Judith. Hello, Judith. Hi, Peter. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So she's very special to me because she brought me up ever since I was a baby. So, Pete, this is Margot, my biological mum. Hello, Margot. Hi, nice to meet you. So, Pete, this is Rainy, one of my mums. How do you do? She does all okay. the cooking. So, Pete, this is Hafa. One of my mums. Hello, Hava. Oh, hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm OK, thank you. And she does the cleaning around the house. Amen. What's it like living with 17 mm -hmm. brothers and sisters? It's like having a load of aunties and cousins come round for a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a, a cue for the bathroom in the morning, though. Yeah. Fun? Yes, very fun. Ever any arguments? Yeah, I guess so. Is Ellie doing ballet? In this household, there's never any time alone. No! I think I'm going to take Franey out tonight. And sharing is a way of life. I just want to make sure we know we've got them all. That's all I'm saying. But it's not cheap. So Phil's moved his tribe from an English farm to the Greek island of Crete. All day long I'd if I was a wealthy man. He also says he's escaping Western judgments about the sharp way of life. Is it fair on the women, their lifestyle? Do you see that it, it can be difficult for them? I won't deny that there are times when I've tied myself up in knots to try and work it out, that I've maybe not said that right or done that right or, oh, I should have given that one more time or, or maybe I said that wrong or did that wrong. And Yeah, I mean, I've, I have to work that all out, but at the end of the day, this is not for... Every Sheila, as you put it. <laughs> I didn't put it like no, that. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but Phil's not just having a laugh when it comes to his wife style. The divorced ex-radio DJ from Sussex says his penchant for polygamy is, in fact, a serious spiritual calling. <laughs> Nothing less than a direct message from God. What did he say to you? It wasn't so much what he said, it was the way he spoke to me. He spoke to me as if I were a king. That's the only way I can describe it. Now, this is where I feel like, you know, I can imagine what people are thinking, this guy's an absolute loon. But let me tell you something. If this builds the kingdom, I'll take a hundred wives. 
morning, what? It's supposed to be grumpy. <laughs> what type? Phil is a Messianic Jew, and the self-styled rabbi met the first of his wives, Judith, in his synagogue. What I discovered was that every single king of Israel, when they became a king of Israel, they took wives. So Philip then took six more wives, Tracy, Karen, Hava, Hannah, Margot and Franey. What was the moment, the realisation that you were now in your own synagogue, gathering those women up and saying, come and be my wives? Well, I wouldn't word it that way. You're wording it that way. I think it's a pretty apt description. Well, I didn't gather them. You know, I, I, I wasn't avidly looking to gather wives for myself. All right, guys, come for a picture. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, that's great. Harbour over there, and Hannah. Yeah, that's it. Today, almost 12 years into their completely unconventional marriages, that's it. All in skittle order. <laughs> Phil is living with five of his wives, and as you'd expect, there have been fits of jealousy and resentment. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to kneel in front of you. But incredibly, everyone says that now they're just one big happy family. In the beginning, that was, that was really hard. And sometimes it would be, not when they're having a big cuddle and a kiss, it would just be a casual touch. It would be the things that you would think, why has that made me jealous, but a big hug and a kiss hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Hannah? What are your thoughts about having to share? You feel quite comfortable having Judith on the other yeah, side of your yeah, husband? Yeah, I do, I do, very, very much. We are used to each other, you know, we have been together since 12 years and that just, you know, we had to go through a lot of pain. Yeah, we would shout and scream and <laughs> abuse and um, we might have tantrums and storm off or, um, yeah, or we might just boil inside quietly. <laughs> and Philip, you're in the middle of all of this. Does that give you a sense of power and control for you? Uh, uh. <laughs> I have a wardrobe with crash helmets. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have a wardrobe of wives. <laughs> yeah. But not everybody's laughing. Tracy Sharp was Phil's seventh wife until they separated last year. I remember when I was a kid thinking, I can't wait till I'm 30 because I'll be married and settled by then. But <laughs> I didn't expect there to be six others. <laughs> Tracy also married Phil, who was once her rabbi. Not in the eyes of British law, but, as all of his wives do, by changing her surname, wearing a wedding ring and consummating their relationship. Were you vulnerable? I think there was a vulnerability about all of us. You make yourself, living in that kind of environment, you make yourself very vulnerable. And he is very charismatic, but it would charm the birds out of the trees. Do you know what I mean? It was <laughs> well, he charmed all you women out of the synagogue. Mm. Yeah, he certainly did. <laughs> but she says that so charm didn't last. I think there was always an element of rivalry amongst the wives. In the beginning, it was horrendous. <laughs> we were so very close. And then to know that he's spending the night with another woman, even though I knew that woman and the rest of it, it's really hard. It, it's soul-destroying in some respects. You don't have to be Einstein, Tracy, to work out that it was going to be difficult. No, I know, but I don't think any of us realised just the extent of it. Can you play them off each other? Is that what you do as well? No. Well, if I do, I don't know I'm doing it. Mm. In fact, the, the truth of the matter is, every day I feel more and more humble, more and more simple, more and more ordinary, more and more just an ordinary bloke. You're just a humble king. Well, I'm trying to be. But surely even <laughs> humble kings can stumble when it comes to tricky, intimate situations. It's really nice having all my wives looking suntanned. <laughs> How on earth does a relationship work with one man and more than half a dozen women? Same as it does. <laughs> with others. <laughs> Basically it's up to me, but I'm pretty sensitive. I know their needs and I know when they're, when they're needing to be close. And, um, and, and my heart is to serve them. It's, it, it isn't for them to serve me, although they do. It's very much the other way around, but we serve each other. <laughs> 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 Speechless! <laughs> 
Phil's wives, together in a household now for over a decade, seem equally as relaxed about their intimate lives. Yeah, I'm Monday. Marco's Tuesday. Yeah. No, it's complete nonsense. It's not, that is not how it works. It's not. Philip generally says who he would like to stay, you know, usually for a few days or even a few weeks. But it doesn't mean he doesn't then also take a different wife out for dinner during that time. It's not just, you know, one wife for a period. You just get a sense. You get a sense uh, of, of, of when it, how long it's right to be together, you know, when it's not right to be together. I may even say, you know, I'm just, just not up to it tonight. You know, it's pretty normal, really. <laughs> A lot different to what you've known, this seaside lifestyle, Tracy. Yeah, it's a lot quieter now. My, Tracy my says she left quieter. Phil's harem for good last year because she just couldn't cope with sharing her husband. So it's all, it's all coming together. Really. She now lives in southern England and Phil's sixth wife, Karen, has gone travelling, <laughs> trying to work out whether the polygamous lifestyle is for her after all. Do you still love him? Yeah, I think I do. Would you go back to him? No. Why? Because I don't make a very good sardine. <laughs> back in Crete, young Ellie knows being part of a family this big means fun. I feel like the Pied Piper. <laughs> but constant compromise. This green one. I want to have my parents to myself sometimes. I don't want to have to share. I, don't, I want to be able to choose my own ice cream. And this one. Do you think, oh, I'd like that. I'd like to just have one mum, one dad, and two brothers and sisters. No, I never felt that. That's just normal. That's I'm the luckiest girl to have this dad and, this, and these mums and, uh, and these brothers and sisters. I think I'm the luckiest girl in the world because I've got this family. And the Sharps readily answer the critics about what all this is doing to their kids. I'm going to turn the lights off now. I can't see how a strong, healthy, loving family headed up by a dad who totally and utterly adores them, supported by seven wives, could in any way be damaging to them. You really believe that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to sound arrogant now. Please. I love myself so much. If I can give that to my kids, they won't give us stuff either. <laughs> <laughs> like them or loathe them, fact is, the supersized Sharp family is unapologetically polygamous. So much so that Phil has more plans to expand his clan, more kids, and possibly, you guessed it, an eighth, Mrs. Sharp. <laughs> So realistically, more wives could come into the family. Yes, but I mean, there's not many women gagging to yeah. be married to a man who's got five, six, seven other wives, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and 18 kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.